Hello everyone and welcome back to another video and today we're going to be doing the interactive rating component from Frontend Mentor. So you can head into frontendmentor.io forward slash challenges and you can click on this card and you can get started. So I should mention that I already downloaded the files for this so I was testing it out and I don't have to download it again but because it's probably it's going to be your first time then you can just go ahead and say start challenge for free right here okay and then i'm just going to extract these files and then i'm going to open them up in my visual studio code editor okay so once you download and extract the files this is what you should have in your file structure depending on the code editor that you're using i'm using visual studio code so i have the design files right here i have the images and i have the git ignore the index html the readmes and the style guide so what i want to do is i want to open up my terminal in vs code using control and j or control and tilde which is the back tick and then inside here, because we're going to be building this in React, I just want to create a new React application. So I'm going to say npx create dash react dash app, and I'm going to call this solution. Okay, so as this canvases, then I'm just going to wait for it to finish, and then we can begin. Okay, now that this is done, then I'm just going to cd into the solution folder, and then I'm going to say npm run start which will start our development server on locals 3000 and then as this opens up what i want to do is i just want to go inside this solution and then i want to grab this favicon okay and i want to place it inside my my public folder there we go and then i'm going to delete this oops and then i'm going to rename this to favicon.png and then inside my index.html, I'm going to rename this to favicon.png, like so. Okay, is there anything else we need to change? Probably this. So I'm just going to change this into interactive rating component. Probably should have something like front end mentor, like so. Then I'm going to save this, and then we're going to do some bit of cleanup. So I'm going to delete the app.css up test js the logo report with vitals and the setup tests just delete these okay so once we have that i think we should be ready to begin i'm i'm really thinking about whether to use tailwind for this project or not and if i do use tailwind then it's going to be the cdn and the tailwind cdn that is used for production currently is version 2 yeah version 2 because uh tailwind version 3 doesn't have um uh, uh, kind of like a style sheet CDN, so they built a script for it. Okay, so let's see, let's see, let's see. Um, we need to be, do a bit of cleanup, otherwise our app is going to break. Actually, let me just confirm. Yeah, our app breaks. So let me just remove this. Let's say a nation that says interactive pricing component. And also, I reduced my font size a bit. I hope it's still going to be uh, readable and viewable. In index.js, we need to remove this because we no longer have this file. There we go. Save this. What's happening? Okay, there we go. And then we should have this. Okay, fantastic. Now, um, let me go into cdnjs.com and let's just go ahead and grab the tailwind cdn. So, tail, tailwind.css, or tailwind CSS, sorry. And then inside my public folder, inside index.html, let me just paste it inside here. And this should reset a lot of the styles. There we go. And then the next thing that I do want to do is I want to go inside my style guide and then we can begin grabbing our fonts and our colors. So I'm just going to copy all of this here. So just copy this. And then I'm going to open up this link. We are grabbing the 400 and 700 font weight. Okay, so as that opens up, let me go inside my index.css. Let's clean this up. And then let's change this into overpass with the fallback of sans serif. And then at the top, let's add our variables or root. Like so, let's paste this in. And then we can remove this. And then let's remember to add our semicolons. Let's change this into dash dash orange. Orange. This is dash dash white this is light gray this is medium gray this is dark blue this is very dark blue 
so very dark blue okay so once we have that then we can begin um checking out how this looks in our mobile design okay so we're going to have this for the mobile looking pretty nice right is this a gradient by the way this looks like a gradient between here and here hmm. okay so let's go ahead and let's grab this font called overpass and i actually have it i actually grabbed it so these days uh, fonts.google.com remembers the last font that you got so you can go ahead and you can select the 400 right here and then the uh what is it the bold 700 and then i'm just going to use the import right here and i'm copy, going to copy this and then let's have this on top okay so there we go now that we have that then a lot of the styles should be reset inside here as you can see the styles are reset so let's go ahead and let's add this background color to our body and we can do that very easily by just saying background background and let's say linear gradient and uh the reason why i'm adding a linear gradient here is because this looks like a linear you see how this is a bit lighter than this other side right it seems like a linear gradient um looks very interesting i didn't catch this the first time i was building this actually so linear gradient let's say this is about uh what degree is that 120 degrees let's say from dark blue come on dark blue okay let's do this i don't know whether this is work this will work actually from dark blue to very dark blue var very dark blue this needs this need to have like percentages right i think they do or not you know uh and you know what i'm actually doing this wrongly the body <laughs> the body is not the one with the with the uh with the gradient it's the container it's this container with the gradient so let me just cut this out actually no let me just comment it out and then right here let me go and add the background to very dark blue like so and there we go and then now let's begin building this out so what i'm going to do is for this project probably i'm just going to have all the components inside this app uh inside the main app component so i'm just going to remove this and then i'm going to return a let me return a deal with the class of wrapper and i'm choosing wrapper because tailwind had, has a class of container which i don't want to um, add because it's going to reset some of the styles so this deal with the class of wrapper is going to have an image here which is the star image uh this image right here the star image and then in below this we're going to have an h1 let me call this an h2 that is called how did we do how did we do and then you know what for the paragraph let me just open the index.html and just copy this it's going to be faster so let me just copy this paste it inside here and then below this we have a rating so for this rating we're going to have a ul with the list items which are five of them and these list items are going to be buttons okay so one two three four five now i just want to mention that we are going to refactor this a bit okay we're going to refactor this a bit i'm just building it out so that we can just tell our ui for now and then when i save this then we should have style not defined of course let me import that image at the top so we need to import star from dot, dot slash for, sorry from dot slash images and do not actually don't have it yet do i no it's not inside here so i need to grab these images so let me close this so i need to grab this images folder and i'm just going to drag and drop it inside my source folder like so and that should have it so dot slash images forward slash uh, what's the name of this icon icon star dot svg so icon dash star dot svg and save this and we should have this on the screen look at this right there looking nice right and then once we do that then once we have our button we need to add sorry once we have our numbers then we need to add our button on the bottom so inside my app.js right below the ul i'm going to add a button with a class of btn dash rating okay and then this is going to say submit and actually not i want to grab this and place it inside the div like so and then let's begin to style this out so the first thing that i'm going to do is inside my index.css i'm going to access the btn rating and then i'm going to add a background color of orange on it so orange there we go so this is our button and then i want to access the class of wrapper 
and then the cluster wrapper is going to have a background color of uh, should be dark gray or dark blue is it dark blue dark blue this one and actually you know what now the wrapper now now this should come here this should come here there we go so just remove the comment and we're going to have this but this linear gradient i don't know whether you can see it it's a bit lighter on this side and then darker on this side and then inside the wrapper let's have a padding of um 1.25 gram all around that's about 20 pixels that's 20 pixels actually and you know what? let me add a font size here let me add a font size of 16 pixels i do realize that in the style guide uh the font size is 15 pixels okay i do realize this but i'm just having this as 16 pixels so once you have this then let's have a border radius of 0 0.625 rem which is 10 pixels all around actually it's 10 pixels if you have this as 16 pixels okay and then hmm what else do you need to do we just need to limit it so the first thing that i want to do is i want to have this container push inwards okay so i can do that by having a margin on the body so let's have a margin of 1.25 rem and a zero on the top and bottom so 1.25 rem on the left and right is zero on the top and bottom and then i'm going to have this and then i want to push this to the center okay so that's easy enough to do i can just go to the body is it to the body actually i can just say display flex align item center just by contact to the center and then i can say set a fixed height to, of, to this of calculate 100 viewport heights minus 0 0.1 pixels and there we go so we have this to the center and then just to add a media query i want i don't want this to span all the way to the end i just want to limit it to about 400 pixels so i'm going to add a media query here and i'm going to say at media for a mean width of 500 pixels and above then i want to access the wrapper class and i want this to have a width of 400 pixels and there we go so we're going to have this would you look at this looking fantastic and then once we have that then we can place this to the right and then we can have this to the left and then we can just do it as we see the changes on the screen okay so let's go ahead and um, let's go into our app.js let's style this h2 let's give this h2 a class name class name of text dash gray dash 100 let's say text dash 3xl let's say margin y of seven let's say six okay and then let's go inside this paragraph let's give this a class name of text dash gray dash 300 let's say oh, let me see how font it looks let's say margin bottom of five or margin bottom of ten pushed away from these numbers and then let's go inside this ul give this a class name of grid and grid columns five with a gap of three and we have our numbers right there and then let's say margin bottom of 10 push away from this button there we go and then let's go inside we need to style out these buttons but i don't want to style them out yet okay because we're going to convert this into a single component that we're going to reuse and i just want to add the styles once so i'm, I'm just going to leave it blank for now okay so let's go ahead and style out this image so we're going to have this image have a bg gray of 700 with the padding all around of two and then let's give it a fully rounded border so that it's going to appear around so there we go okay fantastic and then let's style out our submit button so here btn rating we're just going to say actually not on this div we're going to say this div is going to be um text dash center okay let's say on this button let's say with dash full we should take it all the way to the end there we go and then text dash white okay and then let's say uppercase and tracking dash wide okay and if you notice this font is a bit um what's the word is a bit off so to speak because uh the padding on the bottom of the font is more than the padding on the top okay so what i'm going to do is i'm going to add a padding of three here on the top and a padding bottom of two which should even it out okay and then here i'm going to add a rounded full to make this row uh, edges rounded like so fantastic and then we want to add a hover effect on this button on the btn rating so i'm going to add this in my index.css so right below this i'm going to say 
dot btn rating and for the hover state then i want the background color to change to white like so and then let's add a transition of all so transition of the properties by 0 0.3 seconds 0 0.3 seconds and let, let's say is in out so we're going to have this okay and obviously this is a bit much let's say 0 0.15 and then let's change this color to orange as well on hover so color change this to orange there we go and by the way, i should mention that if it doesn't give you the options here for your variables then you can say control and space bar and then you can just click on this that's that's how i'm, I'm doing this by the way okay so we're going to have this now the next thing that we know i want to do is i want to remove these buttons from here and i want to create a component for them so right at the top, right about here. So right inside here, I'm just going to create a button component. So const button equals to this, like so. And then I just want to return a button. So I'm going to be returning a button here. Come on, let's see. Really? So I'm going to return a button that is going to do something inside here, okay? <laughs> so for now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to move all of this. So just select the multiple like so. And then inside here, I'm going to render a button like so, okay? Now, obviously this is going to do nothing because we don't have anything inside here. But I want these buttons to have the numbers one to five. So I'm going to pass in a prop inside here, some props. And then inside here, I'm just going to say number equals to my brackets. And then this is going to have a number one, this is two, this is three, this is four this is five okay now that we have this inside here this is a prop then it means that we can go into our button component and we can destructure this okay so right inside here i can access the number prop and then for the buttons inside here i can now just display the number like so and it should display one two three four five and now we can style this out so i'm going to give this a class name of text dash uh sorry let me start with the background so bg dash gray dash 700 there we go let's say height dash 10 and width dash 10 okay let's say rounded rounded dash full and then let's say padding top dash one i don't know whether you can see it through uh, what i was saying that the font has more padding on the bottom than on the top that's why i'm adding the padding on the top of one here just to center this out properly and then let's say text dash gray dash 200 okay and then um Let's, let me let me show you something in the design if you check if you check the active states when the button is active then it has a uh, a white uh, kind of a slightly gray background and then when you hover over it it is orange okay probably it's the opposite but it works either way so what you can do is we can go inside here and we can say that when we focus on this button then i want the bg to be gray dash 400 and look at this now when i click on this now the focus remains see that interesting right interesting and then now what i want to do is i want to have a custom class on this so btn let me say btn um what they call this i call this btn rating let me call this btn number and the reason i'm adding this custom class is because i don't have this orange color in, in tailwind and i want to add it inside here so for the btn number i want to access the hover state for this and i want to say that for the hover state then the background color should be orange like so and look at this okay and then let's just add a transition here so let me just say transition dash all duration dash 300. now let me say duration dash 150. and there we go so the next thing that we do need to do is just build out our our thank you page because this has a thank you page as well so where is it the thank you state for this and that is just going to involve a bit of reusing these styles okay and for this i can just place this as full screen and then i want to just copy the div with a class of wrapper so for this we're going to create a new component and i'm going to create this component at the bottom so i'm going to call this const thank you is equal to this like so and then we're going to return a div with a class of wrapper this div is going to have an h2 that says thank you for something uh, what does it say 
let me go inside here so it says uh, you selected this out of this okay then it says thank you and then we have a paragraph that says this so let me just copy this and then below this we're going to have a paragraph that says this and then at the top of this there's an image okay so let me just check the the design so mobile thank you state we have this image so let me get this image so at the top i'm going to import i'm going to say import thank or let me just say thanks from dot slash images and it's called illustration thank you dot svg so illustration thank you dot svg and then at the bottom here i'm just going to call this thanks okay and then once we have this then we should be able to oh sorry there's something missing this is missing you selected four out of five so below this i'm going to have a paragraph that says you selected uh, for now it's just going to say number out of out of five okay and then we're going to style this out for a moment in a moment sorry and uh, for now i just want to render this component inside here so below this div and actually outside of this div i just want to render thank you it's so and of course now it's going to break a bit because now we're going to be seeing two components inside here but that's okay because i want to style this div out as well so what i'm going to do is we're just going to reuse a bit of styles and we're just going to do a bit of copy pasting so i'm just going to copy these styles here copy this and paste them inside this h2 and then go inside this paragraph copy this paste them inside this paragraph and we should see this okay and then this is aligned to the center so let me say text the center and then this is going to say text dash center as well like so and then i would need this image to come to the center as well so i'm going to go inside here give this a class name block and mx auto we should center it let's say margin bottom of 10 pushed away from this paragraph let me say 5 10 is a bit big and then let's grab this paragraph so give this a class name of let me say paragraph dash rating and paragraph dash rating because once again i want to access this orange color on it so let me go ahead inside here and then let's say for the paragraph for the paragraph oh, come on paragraph dash rating class i want this to have a color of orange like so and then you can go back inside here and you can say we want this to have a bg of gray dash 700 okay we want this to have a rounded dash full and then let's say text dash center text dash center center um we i don't want this to go all the way to the end so what does inline block do display inline block no i don't want that what if I add MX auto on this? No, it doesn't work. So that would mean that probably what I can do is grab this, place it inside the div, and then go inside this div and give this div a class name of flex. Flex. Okay, and items the center. And justify dash center. We should place it to the center. There we go. And then I can go inside this paragraph, give this a class name of text dash small, make it a bit smaller. And then let me give it a class of padding on the x of two just to push this out a little bit and then padding on the top of one just to even it out okay so you don't have that let me let me change this to four yeah i think that is much better okay so once you have this then this is our thank you page and then this is our submit page but then what i want to do is the functionality for this is that when you click on this then this shows up okay when you submit this then this shows up I also want that we're going to have a button here that when I click on this, it's going to take us back to this, okay? So that's easy enough to do. I'm just going to go ahead and copy this button. I should just copy this div and then paste it inside here and then change this to uh, red again. Like so, and it should appear right there. Okay, fantastic, fantastic. Now, let's begin adding our functionality. So the first thing that we, need, uh, that we do need to do is, because this is just going to be a matter of toggling items, I want to import use state from react which is going to handle our state values right so i'm going to say import use state from react and then below this so i'm just going to have a is submitted state value and set is submitted function this is going to be equal to use state and by default it's going to be false okay 
and then what i want to do is i want to go inside this thank you component which is basically this right and i want to place in a conditional right so i'm going to place in my curly brackets and i'm going to say that only when is submitted is true only when it is true so double ampersands do i want this component to render right so for now it's true, it should disappear and there we go if i go back inside here and change this to true then we should see our component okay so i'm going to change this to false and then we're going to do the same thing for this div with the class of wrapper which is basically our app so right around up to here okay I'm going to cut this out and i'm going to say when is submitted is false that's when i want this to render okay so notice the difference this is when is submitted is false and this is when is submitted is true okay so please notice the difference and now we should have this okay so if i change this to true then this should disappear and then we should see our thank you so true and would you look at that and then false okay so let's add the functionality on the buttons to toggle this too right so we can go ahead and we can go into this button and we can have an on click on this and we're going to place in our inline function and i'm going to say that when you click on this button then we just want to say set is submitted to um true like so and then i'm just going to copy this and then i'm going to go inside this other button here at the bottom and then change this to false like so and set is submitted is not is not defined in this thank you because we need to pass it in as a prop okay so you can go right inside here and i can say set is submitted prop is equal to the set is submitted state uh, uh function and that should work okay okay it not really work because we need to <laughs> Uh, destroy it as a prop so set is submitted like so so now when you click on this we have this and then when you click on this it goes back so this is working correctly right now the next thing that you do need to do is now add the functionality for the button because remember you selected number out of five depends on the number that you select inside here right so let's go ahead and do that so the first thing that i do need to do is and i suggest to show you that this is working is we can go inside this button component and i can just say on click and when I click on this, I just want to say console.log and I just want to log the number that we click on. So basically this one that we have inside here, right? So I'm going to save this and then let's go to a bigger screen. Let me press on F12 to open up my dev server and it says da 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 reference ties is not here. Oh, so the, this is the error that we had in the first place. So we can just reload it to get rid of it. And then now when I click on this, look at this. Now it shows one, two, three, four, and five. So we need to get these numbers from here and display them here right uh, probably you already have the solution for this but let's go ahead and do it so the first thing that i'm going to do is i'm going to go ahead and i'm going to add a, a new state value so i'm going to call this items and set items this is going to be equal to use state and by default it's going to be an empty string right and then we need to access these items inside this thank you component so what i'm going to do is i'm going to pass in the items as a prop so items prop is equal to the item state value and then i can destruct it inside here by saying items like so and then now instead of rendering the number i'm just going to render the items okay and when i save this then it should be blank by default right blank by default because by default items is an empty string so now what you need to do is when you click on this button i want to set items into the number of the button that you click on so that's easy enough to do you can just go inside here we can remove this and you can say set items into number and once you do that then we can go back inside here to write again we can click on one and it should say you selected one out of five click on two two out of five click on three three out of five click on four four out of five and then you can click on five and five out of five okay so that is the functionality of the interactive rating component and before we do finish i want to create a github repository for this and then i want to submit it as well so let's go ahead and we can close this down we can close all of this down okay and i can stop my development server let me just confirm that i don't have any errors okay fantastic so close that down okay so let's go to github let's create a new repository let's call this interactive rating component okay this is going to be public create repository okay let me copy this link and then let's say git init oops i should probably go out of this so cd out of this and then say git init so that it grabs all of this as well there we go 
and then I'm going to say git add design and git commit design files. Let's say git add dot git ignore. Let's say git commit and let's say git ignore. Let's say git add solution. Let's say git. Oh, they, there's already a git repository inside this solution. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go inside this folder. Where is it? This one. And then I need to delete this, uh, the empty git repository. So I'm going to delete this empty git repository. There we go. And then we can add git add solution once again. And git commit, let's just say solution. And then let's say git add index.html git commit let's say index.html template git add readme let me just add both readmes git commit let's say readme and git add style guide.md and git commit let's say style guide.md then like git remote add origin let's paste in our link and git push dash u origin main what is not added inside here uh what's not added let's see oops i did something wrong <laughs> I did something wrong. So now see this. Okay, so look at this in our repository. Notice this. So this is going to be a problem. So let me say git rm dash dash cached solution, which is going to remove that. And then now we can go ahead and uh, add all of this back in. So git add solution. Okay, there we go. Git commit dash m, let's say solution. And then git push we should now push the correct one into the repository so let me wait and see and then we can reload this and this should disappear there we go so now our solution is there with error all the files that are needed correct okay so let's go ahead into netlify and then let's deploy our application and then let's open up fronted mentor let me close this close this close this and then i can go to visit challenge hub and we should say submit solution okay so login so this is the repository the repository is this one just copy the correct link paste it inside here let's say interactive rating component built in react.js there we go live set url is going to be got in a moment so add new site import existing project And the project is called interactive okay so interactive rating component right there and then the build command is going to be npm run build the published directory is going to be the um i said the build directory what i'm going what am i going to deploy? i need to deploy the solutions so the build what does this mean base directory is going to be the solutions should be solutions and this is going to be solutions for slash build there we go so deploy site and this should deploy so let me change this to this site name to interactive pricing on it you can get this link in the description so let's just say react.js dash there we go and then now we can wait for this to finish deploying oops failed it failed where did it fail finished so solution publish directory publish the build directory that should be the correct one right okay so i think i renamed i named the solution wrongly i renamed i named it solutions instead of solution with one s let this finish running okay and site is live and you can go ahead and can visit this site and we should see our application and there we go we could would you look at that so we can submit this 
and selected five out of five right again you can say three out of five okay fantastic so now let's go ahead and copy this link and we can submit our live site url inside here and then we can just say submit solution and then once that is done then we are going to be done with the project as well so there we go we have our solution okay fantastic so yeah that is going to be it i hope you enjoyed that project it was a bit uh, it was a quite interesting to me and by the way i should mention that um if you don't want to do this i just created multiple components inside the app component okay if you don't want to do, it, to do this then you can just go ahead and uh, destructure this from inside here not destructure but refactor you can take this out into a different folder or a different file and then you can also take this out into a different file and then just pass in the props inside here and everything should work co correctly okay so I, I just thought this was uh, uh, a fun way to, to show you that you can have components inside components okay okay so that is going to be it for this video and if you enjoyed it please leave a like and subscribe to the channel as well and you can leave a comment down below if you have any questions and i'm going to try to respond as soon as i can so see you in the next video bye bye